So uh, it is my pleasure to introduce, I don't need to introduce, but uh, uh, to have uh, Professor Lee Jun Chen here for today's colloquium. Uh, Lee Jun has been at CU Boulder since, uh, I believe, 2011 or 2012. Uh, I don't get the dates right here. Uh, before that, he was at Caltech, where he got his PhD in 2007, and he was a research faculty there for about five years before coming to CU Boulder as an assistant professor. Um, what you may not know, uh, like a little interesting tidbit about Legion is he's actually a theoretical physicist by training and he had his master's in theoretical physics uh, before he made the excellent choice of moving over to, uh, to engineering controls and computer science uh, in that order. Uh, and Legion is going to tell you about all the work that he has done uh, at CU over the last seven years or so. Over to you, Legion. Thank you, Shira, uh, for your introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I'll be telling you uh, the work I have been doing towards developing optimization-based approaches for distributed control and learning of uh, network dynamic systems. So before diving into tonight, I needed to first explain to you exactly what I mean by a network. Uh, I mean by a, dynamic, a network dynamical system. Uh, here are a few familiar examples. The internet connects billions of nodes, uh, and uh, including computers and other devices. Electricity network powers more than 100 million homes in the US. National highway system consists of 160,000 miles of roads connecting almost every city and the town in the nation. In the future, with the increased deployment of Internet of Things devices, all the vehicles on the road will be connected. This will make a network of massive scale too. The first thing to notice is that all these systems are large scale systems composed of a large number of components and subsystems. They are also interconnected either physically or through communication or both. They are often active, can sense, communicate, compute, and actuate. They operate with incomplete information in uncertain environment. For example, a network component only knows the information about its direct neighbor in, on the network. And the input to the network may be time varying or random and unknown or only partially known. But they must achieve certain network-wide objectives or connective behaviors such as economic efficiency and synchronization in power system. So these network-wide objectives can often be formulated as a system-wide optimization problem that minimizes a global objective function subject to a bunch of physical and operational constraints. So here XI denotes the state of a component I or node I, UI is the action or control taken at the component I, and the alpha, beta are system parameters that may be known or unknown. For example, in the internet, we want to transfer data to minimize aggregate delay in data transfer. This is the mean cost flow problem. In the power networks, we want to dispatch power supply to meet demand in the most economically efficient way. That's the optimal power flow problem. In the reinforcement and learning of network vehicles, we want to maximize cumulative aggregate rewards over all vehicles. There are physical and uh, operational constraints in all these problems. For example, in data transfer, the aggregate data rate on a communication link should not exceed the link capacity. In the power system, the power supply and the demand need to be balanced all the time. And uh, the power flow on a power line should not exceed the line limit. So in a system of network vehicles, you may want to keep enough distance between different vehicles. But how to achieve network-wide objective despite the large scale of the system, tricky interaction from interconnection, incomplete information and uncertainty, and the difficult operational constraints. 
So notice that interconnection is both a place and a curse. For example, if there's a shock in the system, interconnection may help absorb the shock. But interconnection may also possibly amplify the shock under certain conditions, leading to cascading failures. This has happened to power network more than once in the last two decades. It has happened to financial market too. Financial market can be seen as a network of banks, borrowers, and lenders. Traditionally, the control of the network system um, meet system-wide or network-wide ob uh, objectives through a suite of centralized and decentralized algorithms with a time scale, with a time scale separation between them. At a higher layer and a relatively slow time scale, given certain model and the global view of the system, centralized system-wide optimization computes a set of point that achieves the desired network-wide objective. And at a low layer and a fast time scale, distributed feedback control regulates the dynamic to the set point under disturbance. Such a control architecture works well in settings with relatively low uncertainty and a small number of control points, such that the problem inputs can be connected and the centralized optimization can be solved in a timely manner. So here, low uncertainty means the variation in the system can be decomposed into two components, a large but a slow and a predictable component that can be handled at a higher layer and a unpredictable fast but small component that can be handled at a lower layer. However, with uh, wide deployment of embedded sensing, communication, and actuation, modern network systems become more dynamic, open, distributed, and autonomous with increasingly large uncertainty and increasingly large number of control points. In such a dynamic setting, network-wide objectives cannot be achieved through centralized optimization as it can, cannot be solved timely due to the unavailability of the problem inputs and the inability to solve a large centralized problem at a fast time scale. So this requires the development of new control architecture and algorithm, especially scalable distributed algorithm to achieve network-wide objectives. So here by distributed algorithms or distributed control, I mean the control UI or the action UI at each component I depends only on the state of that components and the information that can be obtained by direct observation or local communication. So actually how to bridge distributed control at a different components and the network wide objectives and the connected behavior is the single most important challenge of network systems. Uh, it is MP hard even for the simpler problem of stabilization of linear dynamic system. Not, not to mention here, we want to steer and stabilize the system to an equilibrium that is an unknown optimal to an unknown optimization problem. But fortunately, network systems are often very structured and have features that can be exploited for scalable distributed algorithm and design. So in my research brings together optimization systems and control theory and the domain specific knowledge for exploring the structures of underlying problems and the systems and the leveraging them for principled design of a distributed control and learning. In particular, my work has mainly explored the following three structures of networked dynamic systems, factorized structure, dynamics, and the complexity structure. Factorized structure, um, refers to the fact that interdependence in objective constraint and the dynamic of network system are usually local, consistent with the distributed structure of the underlying network. For example, the objective is additive 
with each term depending only on a single component or a pair of components that are directly connected and so on. And uh, the constraint and the dynamics at each component depends only on its labels in the network. Now, this distributed structure and the factorized dynamics implies distributed solution based on local information is both necessary and uh, possible. The second structure comes from a simple yet powerful observation. Dynamics of network system often arises from violation of the constraints in the system-wide optimization problem. Um, let's give you an example uh, to see uh, what it means. So this example is from power system. If you look at optimal power for flow problem, you want to dispatch the supply at the minimal cost to meet the demand. So this problem will subject to power flow balance constraint. Now, if you look at the frequency dynamics in the system, the frequency dynamics arises from the imbalance of supply and the demand. If you have more supply, the frequency will increase and uh, otherwise it will decrease, right? Now, if the dynamics converges to a fixed point or equilibrium, then at the fixed point or equilibrium, the constraints in the system-wide optimization problem will be satisfied. You may conjecture if you can design local or distributed control in a smart way, you can steer the dynamic system to the optimal solution of this system-wide optimization problem. The third structure uh, pertains to the convex optimization methods we take, less about the type of systems we investigate. Roughly speaking, complexity or convex problem allows a large flexibility in the design choice and the implementation of the algorithm. It is a bit abstract. Uh, let me explain to you what it means uh, using an example. Suppose you apply the gradient this, uh, descent method to minimize a convex function fx. At each iteration k, you will, cap, you will compute the negative gradient. You will compute or estimate a negative gradient. So the negative gradient is the search direction. You update along that direction and so on. You might think it is very important to compute or estimate negative gradient or gradient accurately. But the truth is not, you can, very, you can be very sloppy in computing and estimating the gradient. For example, any search direction V that points more less to the negative, to the direction of negative gradient will work, right? It will also work if the search direction is random, but uh, the average of search direction points to the uh, negative gradient direction. Now, if you have a communication constraint, for example, if your communication is range limited, that's fine. You can just send the course information about the gradient. For example, in the scalar case, you can just tell whether the gradient is positive or negative. That's only one bit of information. Or if you have a known delay in communication, that's fine too. You can just use the other value of gradient at a previous iteration if the delay is bounded, which means you know, finally you will get some update. So this flexibility in the design choice and the implementation of the algorithm will help with robustness and the scalability of the uh, resulting system. It actually also helps make the design choice. My research has, has uh, leveraged network dynamics and the factorized structure to develop a theoretical foundation for distributed real-time feedback optimization and its application to power system. By further leverage complexity structure, we have also investigated how to take into consideration of cyber constraints such as limited communication and limited sensing in distributed control. By never region factorized structure, we have also developed distributed and structured learning uh, for the Kuhlman operator learning and the reinforcement learning in the network dynamic systems.
Uh, by leveraging capacity structure, I have also developed scalable and efficient algorithms for some important questions in communication networks. Any questions so far? Okay, next, I'm going to dive into some details for- oh, I, I have a question if, uh, if there is time, Legion. Sure. So, so when you talk about convex optimization problem, right? So, so, so where does the convex optimization problem actually come from? I mean, in the sense that when you talk about optimal power flow, right? It doesn't seem convex to me, right? Uh, that's, that's right. So actually the optimal power flow problem uh, with the nonlinear model is a non-convex problem. But fortunately, uh, it still has some complexity structure that can be exploited for efficient computation. So which means at worst case, that's a non-convex problem, but it doesn't mean, you know, for any problem cases, you cannot have an efficient solution, but actually under pretty broad conditions, you can actually solve it, the problem efficiently. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Next, uh, I'm going to dive into some details about into uh, some details of distributed real-time optimization and the distributed control under cyber constraints. And uh, due to the limited time for the other topics, I'm, ju I'm just going to briefly talk about motivations and uh, the research questions uh, we seek to answer without giving any detail. As I mentioned earlier, since the dynamics often arises from violation of the constraints and uh, at a fixed point of the dynamics, the constraints for the uh, system-wide optimization problem will be satisfied. It is possible to design distributed control to steer the dynamic system to the optimal solution of the system-wide optimization problem that captures network-wide objective. In other words, we name network, we view network is served as an optimization solver and the network dynamics with distributed control is a distributed optimization algorithm to solve a system-wide optimization problem. To see how this might work, uh, let's take a look at an example. This example uh, is from the work uh, with my student, Xin Yangzhou, who is currently at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. So consider a system of a couple of oscillators associated with each oscillator I is a phase theta I and a frequency W I. The coupling between oscillator I J depends on a coupling constant B I J and also the difference in the phase in their phases. If I is external force can be both positive or negative, which means, you know, you can speed down oscillator or you can drag it down. If I, W, I is the frequency system frequency response can be seen as distributed feedback control based on local frequency. The first equation are for those oscillators with inertia is basically the Newton's second law. The second equation are for those oscillators without inertia is the first order kinetic equation. It's just the force balance. So you see, if the system converges to a fixed point, there will be force balance at every oscillator. So the coupled oscillators are one of the most investigated network systems and often used to study connective behavior of complex networks. Uh, it can also be used to model the power systems. So in this case, the coupling between oscillators will, will be the branch power flow and the FI will be power supply or demand. And the FI will be the load frequency uh, response or any frequency based load or supply control. Given the control function FI at each oscillator, you can actually define cost function CI di for that oscillator, which is the integral of the inverse of the control function. So you can interpret this cost function as the cost of the control. 
with uh, individual cost of function, you can formulate a system-wide optimization problem that minimizes the aggregate cost of control subject to force balance control. And uh, we, this is the equality cons constraint in the optimization problem. The second inequality constraint can be seen as the operational constraint. For example, in the application of power system, P will be the branch power flow at a, a power none, and the B will be the non limit. This constraint just means the power flow on a power line should not exceed the non limit. So also notice that if I is the increasing function, so the cost of the function we define now is a convex function. So we get a beautiful, you know, convex optimization problem with a, a linear constraint. So we can introduce a round multiplier to handle the uh, equality constraints uh, and define a Lagrange as the weighted sum of the cost function and the constraint function. So the set upon, so notice, Notice that the Lagrange is convex in the decision variable D and P and the concave in the Lagrange multiplier. So the set upon of Lagrange gives the optimal for this optimization problem and a related problem, which is called uh, the dual problem. So with Lagrange, we can actually apply primary dual greedy algorithm to solve for the set upon. Uh, but the notice that in our dynamic system, uh, we have the differential equation. We also have the algebraic equation. That's basically the first order kinetic equation. Now, if you apply primary dual gradient algorithm to all the variables in the continuous time, that will give you differential equation, right? You need to have differential equation for certain oscillator. You also need to have the algebraic equation for other variables. So the way we do that is uh, we solve the Lagrange over part of decision variables. For example, in this case, we minimize over D, we leave P untouched, and then we minimize over lambda two. This is the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to the oscillators without inertia. So the Minimization over D recovers the control function if I, you might think this is actually the motivation we define the cost function in a spatial way. The maximization over uh, Lagrange multiplier nominal two recovers the algebraic equation in the coupled oscillators. Now you can apply primary dual gradient algorithm and you choose a spatial uh, step size, epsilon L and the lambda I, then you get this primer dual algorithm in continuous time. This is a recapture of the primer dual uh, uh, gradient algorithm. Now, if you associate lambda I, that's a Lagrange multiplier for oscillator I. You, if you identify lambda I with WI and then notice this mathematical relation, you will recover the dynamic equations for couple oscillators. So we show network dynamics is indeed a optimization algorithm. It is also a distributed optimization algorithm because the control at every uh, oscillator depends only on its uh, frequency. We can further show the primary dual gradient algorithm conversion to a set point which is the equilibrium of the problem we just mentioned. So we show coupled oscillator indeed solve a network-wide optimization problem. So to recapture uh, the, close, the closed loop uh, dynamic system, which is the network dynamics plus distributed feedback control is a distributed optimization algorithm for solving a system-wide optimization problem. We call this reverse engineering. It provides a scalable way to understand connective behavior arising from distributed control. This approach also provides a systematic approach to design distributed control to achieve network-wide objectives by 
engineering the underlying optimization problem and the algorithms. So roughly speaking, you can show a closed loop system is a distributed algorithm to solve a system-wide optimization problem. That's reverse engineering. In terms of forward engineering, you can design distributed control according to distributed dynamic cognitive algorithm to solve the uh, system-wide optimization problem. So I'm going to give you a example about engineering optimization problem and algorithm later when I talk about distributed control under cyber constraints. So such an approach or framework, question Shira. Yeah, so, so if I may, uh, it's, it's kind of remarkable, right? When you, when you look at some, some dynamics like the one you showed that you know, you are, what is happening under the hood is re really a convex optimization problem and, and that gives you all these insights, right? But you know, there's two questions that arise, right? One is, uh, does, does this always happen, right? Or is it just like, a, like an accident of, of the way power systems are that you, know, you, you get this? Uh, that the second follow-up question would be, you know, if it were happening, you know, would it, how would it be possible for someone like who is, let's say, doesn't have all the insights as you have okay. uh, to recognize that something like that is happening because it, it seems totally non-obvious to me, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's two good questions. Uh, regarding the first question, of course, uh, this framework, uh, this observation applies to certain systems, not all systems. Uh, for example, I can say with confidence it will apply to uh, almost all kinds of flow network, right? For example, you, if you look at communication network, it's uh, about uh, information flow or data flow. Power network is power flow. Uh, and of course, this is idealized model for certain system. If the system has things like loss, this will break things, right? Uh, I would say, you know, looking back, it's trivial, but uh, uh, I come from a physics background. Uh, when I, you know, realized this, it's obvious to me. If you look at physics law, most of the physics, I wouldn't say most, all the physics, physics law can be derived from the minimal action principle. That's basically an optimization problem, right? Of course, if the system has a dissipation, then certain things will break down, but you can still find a way to fix that. But here, you know, if you bring more practical factor there, we can still find a way to fix it, right? But the question is that whether the solution is pretty or locked. So regarding the second equation, uh, I think I, part I partially answered the second equation. Uh, I would say, looking back, it's kind of trivial. Uh, there, I, I didn't mention there's some motivation or origin of this idea. Uh, I would say, uh, uh, you can look at the relation between dynamic system and the algorithm from different perspective. For example, uh, if you look at the convergence proof of optimization algorithm, basically we treat it as dynamic system, right? So there's a deep relation between optimization algorithm and the dynamic system. Uh, they use the same language. I wouldn't say language. They actually use the same argument for stability and, uh, and the convergence but a slightly different language, right? So on the other hand, uh, there's some research related to analog computing that proposed to design dynamic system to solve an optimization problem. So the first the paper I can find is by Roger Brockett. He's a weird no, uh, control theorist and uh, robotics at Harvard University. Uh, in, I think that paper is in 1991, but I believe the idea is much older than that, as I just mentioned, that related to analog computing. Now, in terms of you know, given any dynamic system, you want to see whether it solves optimization problem. The first reference I can find is uh, 2000 at uh, 2000 by Stephen Lowe. And uh, but I believe the idea is earlier than that. Uh, she, uh, I I I'm pretty confident that there's some work of similar flavor in the area of uh, ecology. So now, now in terms of the, the application for the power system, uh, I think uh, I'm the one among the first who find this relation. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. I, I think we, I mean, there's more follow-ups, but I can, I can talk to you okay. about it uh, yeah. after the talk and at the end. But there is a question on chat uh, by, by uh, Carl. 
Uh, I can read it out to you. So he's asking, is there characteristics of dynamics arising from constraints that clue you into the problem of having this underlying convexity or uh, characteristics of types of constraints? So, so I guess his main question is like, how do you know that it would be convex? Okay, uh, that could be seen from two aspects. In terms of the objective function, right, it's, uh, it's always a design. You probably, you know, you can always choose a command objective function. Now, in terms of complexity of constraint, uh, you can look at a fixed point. You can write on fixed point equation. Uh, that equation probably can give you some idea about you know, whether it's convex or not. For example, if you have a equality, nonlinear equality uh, constraint there, most likely it's not a convex problem. Again, as just mentioned that the problem is not a convex, doesn't mean you cannot solve it. You may be able to solve a convex by the problem and then you show the optimal solution of that convex by the problem is the optimal solution of this non-convex problem. Remember, all the result about hard, hardness of non-convex problem is for the worst case, right? I, I, I have a feeling about, you know, the nature is nice to ours. Most likely, you know, the underlying structure is convex, but the uh, wait for art to identify, to find it out. Thank you, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, okay, uh, I think you should carry on and I will, if there are more questions, I'll let you know. Okay, so, okay. So uh, such a approach or framework integrates distributed dynamic uh, cognition algorithm with real time feedback, real -time feedback and the uh, network wide objective. It has distinct advantage of reducing the amount of explicit computation and communication, leading to control simplicity and robustness and scalability. Roughly speaking, most of hard work about computing and communication was implicitly carried out by the dynamic system, right? Okay, so central around the network uh, dynamics as an optimization algorithm framework approach, uh, I have contributed to the development of a theoretical foundation and the practical algorithms for scalable real-time uh, control and optimization of power systems. Now, the belief is that the power network will go through uh, a similar architecture transformation in the next few decades. Now, the telephone network has gone through uh, in previous two to three decades. So during this process, the infrastructure will be dramatically re-engineered and the industry landscape will be drastically reshaped. So this transformation was uh, driven and enabled by a few trends. For example, proliferation of renewable and distributed generation, electrification of uh, transportation, and the participation of end users. For example, if you have a rooftop PV panel in your house, you may want to sell the power supplies from your rooftop PV panel to your neighbor. We also have uh, amazing advances in power electronics. Excuse me. And uh, wide deployment of sensing communication and uh, computation infrastructure. Under the confluence of all these uh, drivers and the enablers, the future power system, especially on the distribution side, will be a large network of uh, distributed energy resources, such as PV, uh, wind turbines, smart nodes, inverters, storage, and the electric vehicles. So, so this large network contains uh, uh, these uh, distributed energy resources are not merely passive nodes, but they are active in the points that may generate, sense, compute, communicate, and actuate. So this presents both a daunting challenge and also a tremendous opportunity. The challenge is that we have an interconnected system of millions of distributed energy resources, introducing rapid, large, random fluctuation in supply, demand, voltage, and the frequency. However, they also provide unprecedented opportunity for efficiency, robustness, and sustainability for our power system if they can be coordinated and optimized properly. The question is not how to do that. So 
based on the network, network dynamics as optimization algorithm approaches, my work uh, has uh, uh, contributed to the development of uh, theoretical foundation and practical algorithm for scalable real-time control and optimization of power grid. Um, in particular, the work highlighted in blue lays out the general reverse and the forward engineering framework for understanding and designing distributed control of power system. We also proposed a distributed real-time frequency control to not only recover the frequency, but also achieve economic efficiency. So in the current network, frequency recovery and economic efficiency are achieved at different time scales. That won't meet the requirement of real-time control. Any questions? Okay, let's move on. Now let's move on uh, to see how to uh, leverage uh, complexity structure uh, of the problem to take into consideration of cyber constraints such as limited communication and sensing in distributed control. So the network dynamic system is actually a cyber physical network. Um, Existing work on distributed control of a complex network system often stop at uh, obtaining an algorithm or design with a certain distributed structure without really paying attention to whether the information required for control is available or even feasible. In real system, you have all kinds of constraints such as limited communication and limited sensing and limited actuation. It is important to understand how unavailability of sensing communication and actuation limits the control performance and how to handle these constraints in the design time. Um, there are lots of work on impact of limited cyber resources on control perfor uh, performance in different applications and the various contexts such as you know, linear dynamic systems. However, existing results often do not apply to complex network systems that are, that are tightly coupled, highly nonlinear with network-wide uh, objectives and the hard and the difficult operational constraint. So with the network dynamics as optimization algorithm framework, you design distributed control according to dynamic cognizant optimization algorithm. So you can actually take into consideration of the cyber constraint in the design time by engineering the underlying optimization problem and the algorithm. Let's see how it might work by an example. Now consider this simple example. Suppose you have a perturbation or disturbance theta i at every node i. And suppose you want to commit a certain resource, SI, to mitigate the, uh, the disturbance. So the resource commitment or the resource provisioning will incur certain cost. That's FI, XI, so that's the cost. And, uh, and also suppose in order to effectively mitigate the disturbances, the aggregated resource has to be equal to the aggregated disturbance. Remember, we do not really know the disturbance, right? So then we can, we can formulate this problem. We try to minimize the cost, aggregate cost of resource provisioning subject to a equality constraint. This equality constraint is required for effective mitigation of disturbance. So even though this is a toy model, but the constraint like this appears in many applications. For example, in the power system, Theta i can be the disturbance in the power supply or demand, right? And uh, x i maybe is the power supply and the demand you want to add to the system to bring the frequency back to the normal frequency. So we can show in order to recover the frequency, the aggregate control in terms of supply or demand has to equal the aggregate disturbance. Remember, we do not really know the disturbance, but our control still have to uh, match that. 
So now if you take a close look at this constraint, this constraint couples all the decision variables. It's not consistent with the network structures, right? But that's okay. You can actually introduce virtual variable YIJ to reformulate an equivalent optimization problem. Now in this problem, the constraint is local and consistent with the distributed structure of network system, right? Notice that why IJ are the virtual variable. It has to be updated, it has to be updated and communicated over a cyber network. So this constraint, so this constraint will require cyber network like this. So this cyber network has the same topology with the physical network. Excuse me. However, this may not be possible, right? Due to say limited communication, right? Uh, but the good news is that the topology of cyber network does not have to be the same as the physical network. And uh, you have a lot of freedom in designing the cyber network. For example, you can actually use this cyber network and uh, formulate the constraint over this cyber network. Now, so here the dotted green line uh, means uh, the cyber connectivity is different from the physical connectivity. And the solid green line means the cyber connectivity and the physical connectivity are the same. Right? So, so you can imagine, you know, you can design or specify the cyber network according to available resources, right? Then you might ask, right? Maybe there's a certain situation, doesn't matter how smart you are, the cyber network cannot support the distributed control you want. That's indeed the case. So we can actually show the connectivity of the cyber network is a must, which means as long as the cyber network connects all the nodes, you are fine. You have a lot of freedom to specify cyber network under that. So this is a fundamental result. And this result actually has important implication for application. Uh, I just mentioned that uh, frequency recovery. Recovery Actually, we can show in order to recover frequency, you have to use communication, right? A purely decentralized control means, you know, you do not use any communication. You can synchronize the frequency, but you cannot bring back, bring the frequency back to the nominal value. So hopefully by now I give you enough hints about you know, how we might do uh, uh, engineering of optimization problem and algorithm. Let me drink some water. So by engineering the underlying optimization problem and algorithm, we have studied the impact and the design of cyber network topology. Cyber network topology depends on the availability and the unavailability of the communication, right? Now, even with communication, the communication may be really limited. It is important to manage, to control, to reduce the communication overhead. We have developed a hierarchical information management scheme to significantly reduce communication overhead to speed up uh, convergence in some power system applications. For example, for a network of 4,500 nodes, we can speed up convergence by 10 times. The speed up will be more if you go with a larger network. Uh, there may be limited sensing in the system too, which means the information such as state information required for distributed control is not directly available. In that situation, you have to estimate the state. Traditionally, state estimation and control design are two stage process. The from the control perspective, state estimation is often non process, but that won't meet the requirement of the real time control and optimization. So we have developed a joint iterative state estimation and the control for the real time optimization. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's briefly talk about uh, how to uh, talk about a distributed structure learning. So the learning of network dynamic system is uh, a relatively unexplored area. Uh, my research is seek to answer two fundamental questions. The first question is if, 
and how factorized the structure of the network system can be exploited for distributed learning. So this is important for scalable and real-time learning. So we have made some progress regarding this question uh, in terms of Kubernetes uh, optimal learning and also multi-agent reinforcement learning. So this work about a distributed Kubernetes optimal learning uh, is uh, the first ever distributed algorithm to uh, the base of our knowledge. And this multi-agent reinforcement learning uh, makes the thesis of my student, Wu Hui who is currently at uh, Facebook. The second equation, the second question is uh, how to maintain the desired structure in the neural representation and the policy. So I have talked a lot about, you know, the importance of the use of the sugar structure. The question is not, you know, you know, how we're how to maintain this desired structure in the neural representation of policy, right? The, dis the distributed structure in the neural representation will facilitate distributed design, right? And the, the distributed structure in the policy will facilitate the implementation, the execution of the policy in the distributed, in the network dynamic systems, right? We also care about another you know, separation of the state and the control. Uh, let me tell you what it means by example. So if you look at the right, left hand side, you have a nonlinear dynamic system in the state space. You have, you have a separation of the state and the control. The state is X, control is U, right? Now, if you say, if you try to learn a linear representation in a functional space by data-driven approach, in general, you may mix the state and the action together. That's the equation on the top, on the right-hand side. So this will give you difficulty for the control consensus uh, because you cannot separate the impact of the state and the input or control. So you would like to have the separation of state and the input in the neural representation. That's the second equation on the right, right? So we have uh, made some progress uh, regarding this question in the setting of Kubernetes arbitrary learning. So we identify the condition under which the state and the control separation is possible. And then we also develop a, a decomposition scheme to maintain the distributed structure in the neural representation, of course, all uh, Okay, I jump a little bit. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's switch it here. This, uh, I have also worked on quite a few interesting and important problems in uh, communication networks, uh, in particular for the MIMO networks. The MIMO technology is one of the most important technology in wireless system. So we have developed a scalable algorithms with guaranteed convergence for the sum rate maximization problem, uh, which is a fundamental problem in resource allocation in wireless system. Uh, so this is some random maximization problem is highly non-complex. And uh, we have a scalable algorithm that admits distributed implementation. We also applied a super resolution uh, method to better estimate manual channels. So these two work are the basis for a new MSF uh, project with uh, three uh, colleagues in EC uh, in ECE department, and uh, for this work on hybrid uh, signal magnet is actually uh, uh, makes the thesis of Chen Yuzhen, uh, uh, my student Chen Yuzhen. Uh, Chen Yu just got his tenure uh, in the past spring uh, at Fudan University, which is uh, uh, one of the top school in China. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so far, all the work I have mentioned can be seen as uh, leverage the spatial structure of the network system to handle computation and the communication constraints. But the network dynamic system is more than cyber physical network. It is actually a cyber physical social network where different components, different subsystems are owned or managed or controlled by different entities and the different shareholders with different interests. Then the question is that 
why they have to follow the specification of your design and algorithm. This brings in the incentive constraint. So it is important to understand what's the impact of incentive to the performance of the system and how to take into consideration incentives constraint in the design time. So we have to take a look at the incentive constraint uh, in two problem setting. The first setting is a multi-armed bandit problem, uh, which is a classical model for sequential decision-making and uh, active learning. Uh, we also take a look at the issue in the uh, signal anticipating of network uh, control system. Uh, here, uh, by signal anticipating, I mean, you know, for example, with the improved intelligence, a network component may be able to infer the impact of their own decision to the control signal, right? So instead of response passively to the control signal, the component may take that into consideration when make a control decision. That will make the interaction of the different components strategic. Then the question is that whether that strategic interaction will lead to any significant degradation of the performance, right? If it, if it indeed, this degradation performance, how to handle that? So, so this work uh, makes uh, the thesis of uh, my student, Ziyuan Liu, uh, who is currently work at uh, Google. Any questions so far? Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, before ending my talk, uh, I would like to uh, briefly discuss uh, some future work, uh, some future research direction I plan to pursue. Um, my work has uh, focused a lot on the distributed structure of the system and, uh, and uh, its implication, right? For example, for learning, I, for learning, you know, I also try to see whether distributed structure of the system we are needed to uh, distributed learning. However, the network system has another important feature, which is the layered control or decision architecture, right? So my, you know, so I plan to explore the implication of layered control architecture in terms of learning. Uh, seek to answer important questions such as how to layer the complex learning of a network system. For example, the division and the placement of model base and the data-driven components and the functionality, abstraction, representation, and the time scale of each layer. Right. I also plan to dive deeper into autonomous systems. If you look at all the work I have presented, uh, I focus a lot about the distributed solution distributed algorithm that can be implemented on board in different network components. But both distributed and centralized solutions and both on board and the cloud-based implementation are needed for autonomous systems. So I aim to develop theoretical foundations and methodology to get the systematic design of choice about the division and the placement and the interface between distributed and centralized mechanisms and between onboard and cloud-based uh, implementation. My work has relied heavily on optimization theory and the method. However, existing results are often, are often quite limited in challenging applications. The new theoretical insights and the methods are needed for exploring structures handling non complexity and developing scalable solutions. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank all my students and all the students who have worked with me. Without them, I won't be here talking all this work. I would also like to thank all my collaborators for their collaboration, help and support, and uh, all the college colleagues in CS department and in the college. Um, Thank you for your time. I'd be happy to take any further question. Okay. Thank you, Legion. Let's thank the speaker and we have five minutes for questions. So hopefully we could take a few questions in those five minutes. So maybe I can I can kick things off, Legion. So so I I 
I, I really appreciated that that comment about you know uh, least action principle in physics because you know the I mean it is it is clear that you know when you can look at the dynamics you know uh, one way to think about it is can you reconstruct a Lagrangian or a, or a Hamiltonian from looking at the dynamics so so you know that your your you know your equations can be written as some kind of a conservation law right there's mm -hmm. a conservation law that that you know results in the dynamical equations of your system that's right. Uh, but often, you know, there's two problems, right? One is uh, it's very difficult to automatically write these things down, right? When you look, when you're just given the local dynamics at each node of your system, it's just a mess, right? Looking at it and uh, writing down. Is there any hope of automating these kinds of insights? Like, uh, or, or you think it's, uh, it's still going to be the human designers? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question, right? Uh, as a computer scientist, we try to automate, uh, automate everything. Uh, I would say it really depends on how you, the what kind of system you focus, right? So if you have really, really simple and isolated system, you probably have a better luck, right? If you consider a more complex system with many different factors. There's lots of messy interaction, right? For example, from physics perspective, there's dissipation and fraction, right? So those kind of things actually uh, without enough information about the structure of the system, it's really hard. But, you know, I, I, I'm pretty optimistic, you know, if you have enough computing power, you can just try, right? You can just try, 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 just like, you know, uh, the reinforcement learning for chess play, right? If you look at the, the work from DeepMind, you're so impressed. We can beat the human player, right? But, uh, but uh, we should remember that this is based on a huge, huge uh, computing power, you know, at your disposal. So I would say, you know, with abundant uh, uh, computing power, if there's no time constraint, you may be able to do that. The, 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 you know, the most obvious approach, not the most the smartest one, or it's not, it's not the smartest one is you just try, right? Until you get something you like. Um, I also want to say something about what I just mentioned, until you get something you like. Now, if you look at a textbook, there's all beautiful theory and the convergence of proof, optimality. They are only useful conceptually. <laughs> In real system, you always have a lot of uh, parameter to tune, right? The truth is not. Most of the time, it's hard to have a principal way to tune a parameter. You have to try and error. And uh, uh, hopefully that my, my answer to that question is satisfying. Uh, so there is a question from Jed on the chat about Cindy, uh, which is, uh, and, and then Majid has a question after that. Uh, oh, mine wasn't really intended as a question. I was just following up on your comments that these are other connections in the realm of discovering Lagrangian and Hamiltonian structures um, or building it in only in the specific places where it's unknown. Anyway. Carry on. Yeah, no, that's that's Nathan Coates work from from UW, right? And there's a lot of work by Hort Lipson on automatically discovering physics laws from data. So there's, I think there's a rich connection there. That's which, right. That's right. There's a, there's a huge community of you know um, machine learning for physics in there. Uh, of, you know, I'm actually a theoretical person. I truly doubt the lab where you know that would be useful for in terms of uh, identify fundamental law, right? Which means something like, you know, the, the theory of relativity and the quantum, you know, uh, uh, dynamics, something like this. But, uh, you know, for the, uh, for the more like empirical model, that's very useful, right? Of course, with empirical model, you can do a lot of things. Uh, the question is not, you know, uh, you worry about a corner case if you do the design based on uh, empirical model, or if you specify the physical law based purely empirical model, they possibly intuitively, there will be always corner case that cannot be covered by the model. Uh, so let's take a question from uh, Majid and then uh, uh, take qu remaining questions offline. Um, yeah. Hi, Lejun. Thanks for the nice presentation. So my question is the, 
does your theory support, support if agents add or leave the network? So let's say in that case, you need to have a you need to have a theory that supports arbitrary size yeah. network, but it's still finite. You know what I mean? That's yeah, that's a good question. Actually, you know, that's why you want to have a network, right? You want to have distributed control. You know, it's okay. It's more like a plug and a play. It's okay, you leave the system. Um, of course, you know, when somebody jumps in or when somebody leaves in the system, that will necessarily introduce some perturbation to the system, right? But uh, the 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 um the hope and what we do is really you know the system will recover quickly from that. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so um, let's thank the speaker uh, and take further questions offline. If you can stay back, Legion, I, I'm sure there are more questions and discussion offline as well. Okay. Thank you, thanks, uh, Legion. Thank you, everyone.